Hello, um, my name is Fikri Muhammad. I am a staff from the Hydrographic Research Group of Geodesy and Geomatics Engineering in um, Institute Technology Bandung. Um, now I'm going to deliver a, a lectures about the offshore positioning course in Module 9. It's about the inertial navigation frames. It is very important for us to note where our frames will be working on before we are determining the position of the object above the earth itself. All right. So, this is the uh, Model 9 about the inertial navigation frame. Welcome to the lecture. First, we're going to talk about the inertial navigation system as a general, or INS. And for we beginning the INS, we have to remind ourselves that the positioning of the Earth are known if we are referencing ourselves to the reference frame. For example, the Earth as a reference frame here, and we want to determine our position, for example, persons above the Earth or aeroplane or ships or anything above the reference frame. So this reference frame itself is considered fixed or statics. We'll go into that later on. And the point whose position to be known is determined as a function of the reference point, right? So the INS, the inertial navigation systems, or known as the INS, this is the system that uses variety of sensors, for example, the gyroscope, accelerometers, and magnetometers, and they are fused all together into one system to determine basically the motion of the ship where um, uh, it goes from one initial position to another one, another position. But here we have to know that it's not directly um, creating the factor point like we're going from one point from A to B but here is only the motions of the ships. And by determining the motions of the ships, we can later on determine the positions of the ships. By using, for example, the most famous algorithm that used for sailings by the sailors is the deck draconic. So for example, here, when the ship is not moving, the accelerometers measure forwards or backwards backwards axis, or usually the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, as a zero. But when it begins to accelerating, or when uh, the ship is on the oceans, because it wouldn't stay still, like, for example, the vehicle uh, stands still on the road because of the wave and the current, and et cetera, et cetera, and the gyroscope will measure the Rotation rate, rotation rate of the ships, the attitudes or the motions of the ship. If you are used to uh, doing the survey uh, with the caustic, for example, the multi beam the sonder, uh, we have to correct the uh, measurement by using the IMU, the inertial measurement unit. It's also basically measuring the motions, and it's also basically the same. But here, we're not going to use the inertial sensor for um, correcting the measurement inputs, the point clouds, but we're going to determine the positions from the uh, the inertial sensor from the gyroscope that calculate the rotation rates, accelerometers that calculate the velocity, and the magnet magnetometers as a additional sensor for calculating the heading. So why the INS is important? Because, for example, here, when the aeroplane want to navigate through the rotated air, assuming that the aeroplane want to fly from the North Pole and it goes to the, we want to fly to Jakarta, but because of the rotation rate of the Earth, for example, for one hour, it's about 15 degrees. 
Instead of flying to Jakarta, it will fly to Yogyakarta. So it's important for the uh, inertial sensor to correct the navigation solutions to the aeroplane so that it can fly to Jakarta. I mean, it will co calculate the correct estimation where the aeroplane will fly during the flying time. All right, now we go to the air fixed frame. Uh, the one frame that is also important for us to note before we go to applying the inertial sensor into our position estimations. The air fixed frame or called E frames or also called the earth centered air fixed frame, ECEF frame. It has its own origin in the center of the earth, for example, here. And its axes are fixed with respect, to, with respect to the Earth. And usually the Z is along the Earth polar axis and the X Earth passes through the intersections of Greenwich meridians. So it passes here and the equator. Take where we live right now, where our universe is located right now. All right, so our fixed frame is uh, we know that already, and we normally use that for the GNSS positioning, for example, and also for uh, other solutions. Like, for example, when the satellite is observing the Earth and the satellite provides imagery, and this imagery is geocentered, geolocated to the uh, Earth fixed frame, for example. And then the next one is the inner shell frames. The so first we have the earth fixed frame. Now we have the inertial frame. So we have two frames already that we're going to talk about that normally the IRS system will be based on. The inertial frame or I frames is basically somehow the same like the earth fixed frame. But the earth fixed frame is rotating. So it, it's fixed to the earth and the earth itself is rotating. So the frame is rotating based on the earth's Rectilinear, rectilinear motions. But in the inertial frames, we assume that it has its own origin at the center of the Earth and it's not rotating with the respect of the uh, fixed stars, for example, suns. This frame is defined as the frame in which the Newton's law of motions hold. And the Z is coincides with the Earth polar axis as well, for example, here. So because it's uh, fix, uh, it might, the X and the Y axis might not always align with each other, with the E frame along the time. So for example, here, uh, the case that we normally uh, experiencing in our normal life is that when we are inside a vehicle, for example, this is the ship, when we are inside the surface ships, and the surface ship is a begin to accelerating. As long as it's uh, in a constant speed, we are in so-called the inner shell frame. But when it begins to the accelerating or it breaks, we are no, uh, we are uh, outside the inner shell frames. We're no longer in the inner shell frame anymore. But as long as it's in the constant speed, when it's moving in a constant speed, we are in the inertial reference frame. All right. Then what it deals with the positioning of the object, basically. Now we're going to talk about the applications of the frames, the navigation's frame. So we have the Earth's fixed frame, the E frame, and then the I frame. Now we have the navigation frame or Sometimes it's also called as a local level frames or end frame. This frame has its own origin as the location of the navigation system. For example, when we are using the car or ships, the origin when the vehicle stands still, like this, this is the origin. For example, we're having uh, frames like this. This is the origin of navigation frame. So this is, will be the zero, uh, zero, and zero. 
of the um, vacation frame. All right. So, uh, yeah, this is the origin, for example, in here. This is the origin of the uh, navigation frame where the vehicle is not uh, moving. And uh, the third rate of the navigation frame with the respect of the artifice frame is governed by the motions of the navigation system. We can either define the frame by using an ED, the north is down, North is down or uh, vice versa. North is up, for example. ENU, right? North up. And this turn rate uh, of the navigation frame in respect to the earth fixed frame, for example, this is the turn rate. The vehicle is moving. This vehicle may turn, for example, into that direction, into the north or the is, or the is. This is uh, the rotation rate is correlated to the earth fixed frame, to the earth center frame. So, for example, here, as I already uh, draw before, that the origin of the frame is in the uh, when the vehicle is not moving. And also so can be fixed into any kind of uh, position that refers to the uh, ECAF frame. And the flirt earth approximation is used here. So assuming that the uh, that we are we are referencing to the inertial reference frame, so the earth is not rotating. It will be good if you are working in a small case, but if you are working in the uh, more bigger area, like for example, when the aeroplane want to fly from the North Pole into the uh, equator, uh, this case will be an issue. So we have to uh, correct the Coriolis effect. But we're not going to talk about that here. For example, this is the origin. And when the vehicle start to move, uh, the origin stays here. So the vehicle will be moved basically with the factor and respected to the x-axis. For example, this is the zero, and maybe the vehicle will be moving uh, here five meters, for example. And it goes like that. All right, then uh, with the respect of the navigation's frame, we have the other, other frame, which is the body frame or B frame. So we have four frame now already the earth fixed frame, inertial frame, navigation frame, and body frame. These four frames, we have to take that into an account every time we want to work with the inertial navigation systems. When we are assuming that the flat earth approximation is valid, then we're working in the inertial frame, assuming that the earth rotation is constant. But if we are working in a bigger case, in a bigger area, we have to consider the Coriolis effect. So the earth rotation exists there. Anyway, the body frame is attached to the vehicle. For example, the center reference point of the vehicle here, the CRP. And the X is usually defined along the forward right. And for example, the X. And it has also the motions of the X. For example, the roll when the vehicle is um, uh, rolling toward the x-axis and then the y-axis which is the pitch and then the z-axis that going downward based on the gravity vector or the yaw. So we have also three Euler angles the roll, pitch, and yaw and we are working in the, in the body frames. It's important for us to note because the gyroscope and the accelerometers are calculating these values later on. And of course, with this Euler angle, we can determine the attitude of the vehicle, of where the vehicle is moving or um, orientation, orientating in uh, some period of time. So the attitude 
This is explaining the object of orientations of the vehicle, for example, the ships. And this attitude can be represented by the directions cosine matrix or DCM, basically. And it utilizes nine parameter, for example, and each of these parameters are referred to the direction cosine values between the reference frame, for example, when the first frame of the body frame, this is the time zero, and the red one is time one, for example. So it creating the Euler angles and creating the direction cosine matrix. So this is the value is different between the Euler angles and the direction cosine matrix. Mm -hmm. The Euler angles define the motions of the vehicle in each axis, x, y, and z. And the direction of cosine matrix defines the cosine values, the directions of cosine values between reference frames, for example, the N and the body frames. So for example, between the P1 axis here to the N1, we'll be having the alpha one, two, and et cetera, et cetera. So where is the rest of parameters? Parameters direction of the cosine, for example, between the beta two, the B2 and N3 will be having the alpha 2, 3. And it goes so on. Okay, then we'll go back again to the Euler angle because it's very important by to define the motions of the ships. In this case, the roll pitch and yaw will have the roll uh, matrix here and Y matrix here and Z matrix here. here. So we're going to use that or implement that in cal any calculations that derive by the gyroscope and accelerometers to calculate the uh, estimated positions of the ships later on in a period of time. All right, but we were talking about the estimation of positions, not calculating the positions because we're not directly calculating the positions. We calculate the positions based on estimations of where the vehicle is moving or where the attitude of the vehicle currently is. So we estimated the positions based on that, not directly calculate the distance between the positions so that we have the position, the next position. We're always estimating the positions and in estimating the position, there will be always an error and we're going to talk the error later on, not, uh, later on. Uh, in another modules, in the next module. So we have all the four frames, ECAF, the inertial frame, the E frame, I frame, N frame, and B frame. So we have four frames. Then we have to transform all together so that we can work the uh, inertial, inertial navigation system properly, right? For example, from the body frame to the end frame. So we have here the ECF, for example, but it's a uh, base, uh, it will be uh, our uh, reference frames for us to work on. And we have here the navigation frame, navigation frame that reference to the earth fixed frame. But we are assuming that the navigation frame is still flo floating away somewhere, which is not fix that will be later on be transformed to the airfix frames. But anyway, in this case, the navigation frame is fixed to the airfix frame. And then we have the body frame here that fixed to the uh, center reference point of the ships or aligned to the ships. And normally, a, it attached to each other. So the uh, body frame and the navigation frame origin is attached to each other, but for the sake of the illustrations, we'll bring it that further away for the exaggerations of the values so that we can better visualize how the connections or the transformation kit works. So we know the role, pitch, and yo of the motions of the ships that calculated from the gyroscope, the yaw is calculating the basically based on the gravity factor of the 
measurement, for example, the accelerometers, gyroscope, the accelerometers basically calculating the um, uh, motions that uh, based on the gravity factor. So that we're going to talk that in the gyroscope and uh, accelerometer uh, lectures. But now we know that the motions of the ships are, we know that, and then we assuming that the first initial positions of the ships are zero, and then the gyroscope and accelerometers is calculating the uh, Euler angles, the roll pitch and yaw, with respect to the navigation frames, and then by doing so, we can estimate basically the uh, rotations between the body and the navigation frames by applying by by putting all the uh, rotations uh, of the Euler angles, the rotations of the roll, the transformations of the uh, roll, pitch, and yaw. So I like this. This is the um, uh, one example of how you can uh, construct construct the rotations uh, matrix between the body frame to the end frame. You can also construct it with the first with the pitch, uh, yo and roll or yo pitch roll three two one. So this is the one two. And three, for example, you can always construct it in the different kind of a value, but it will return differently if you're putting the rotation matrix in different way. And what we're looking for is basically the factor of uh, the body frame where the vehicle uh, currently is. Uh, based on the initial position of the vector of the navigation frame, and then we will be having the, uh, well, putting basically the unknown, the rotation matrix that we constructed earlier to determine where the uh, peak is. So the constructions by putting all these matrices together, these three, we construct, we're putting all the matrices together, we'll be having the big rotations matrix at the end. And then the next one is the uh, E frame to the navigations frame. So we have already the body frame that attached to the navigation frame, right? And then we want to uh, correlate the navigation frame to the earth fix frame or inertial frame if it's if we're walking in the inertial frame if we are walking in the flood with assumption for example so the navigation frame correlations to the or relationship to the earth fix frames is connected with the latitude and the longitude right so we know the latitude of and the longitudes of where the navigation frame currently is above the earth. And what is unknown is the rotations between uh, both frames. And then what we wanted is the uh, yeah, the factor of the navigation frame, basically. So the latitude not, not rotations matrix and the longitude rotation matrix is constructed by this matrices, for example, here. Uh, what we have to note is the clockwise rotations align the navigation frames each uh, east directions with the Earth's east directions. So we have to subtract the latitude angles with 90 degrees. And the longitude rotations matrix aligns the navigation frame down axis with the Earth's up axis based on the latitude. So that's why we have this uh, minus value here. Setting the minus uh, longitudes by using the minus uh, longitude, we are rotating it clockwise. Uh, yeah, clockwise around the z-axis. So we're rotating it clockwise around the z-axis that way. But if we are having the positive values, means that the uh, latitude, so for example here, we are going that way. 
But if we are having positive, means that we are going that way. In other directions. Bit clock, uh, yeah, if it's not clockwise. With the, uh, yeah, with properly aligned, the navigation frame is access with the earth frames is directions. All right. And yeah, as the North Pole being uh, 90, why we have, uh, why we are using the 90 degree here for the North Pole, this is means that, this means that the, the no rotations is needed because the navigation frames down directions already aligns with the earth up rotations. And then at the end, we uh, put both matrices together and we'll be having the big matrix of a uh, full rotation matrix to connect our frames together here. Right. And then for the remarks, we have also heating that calculated by the um, magnetometers for additional measurement. This is the azimuth angle or yaw angle. This is also important for the 2D measurement. And for example, normally navigations of the ships uh, for sailors can be constrained into the 2D maps normally. And the differences between the heading here is that the directions of the heading here is uh, where the uh, uh, vehicle or x-axis of the vehicle of the body frame here, the red, oops, the red one here, pointing at any given moment uh, as expressed by the angular distance relative to the north. So the heading is relative to the body frame, not the vector point, which is of course sometimes, well, most of the times the distance or the directions or the angles between the vector points and the body frames is not that much difference. But anyway, we have to difference say that, that the heading that calculated by the magne magnetometer is preference to the body frames. So we know here also so on the earth, we have the magnetic fields and the earth gravi gravitational accelerations is the 9.8 meter per second quadrat. And since this vector is also almost vertical, we cannot use it alone to determine the heating. And by using the accelerometer, we can measure roll pitch angles, but not the heading. So that's why Sometimes the magnetometer is also uh, necessary to be included in the INS. In the INS, and we are standing still. For example, we can determine what is up, what is down. For uh, the remarks, the navigation equations we have here. Basically, uh, we have uh, when we want to determine where our vehicle located on the Earth frame. We have to have the rotations between first the earth to the navigation frame first because the body is working in the navigation frame where the origin of the vehicle located and then from the navigations to the body frame <clears throat> yeah and for the you know, we're, when we're look, working with the newton laws force divided by mass is equal to spatial force here or accelerations or defined as the spatial force. These forces, yeah, is sometimes referred as spatial force. And we can calculate the velocity, the positions and the chance of the orientations that calculate or measured by the gyroscope and also the accelerometers. And <clears throat> between the two frames, between the two positions, for example, this is the position of the earth, and this is the uh, body, for example, will be connected with the uh, rotations rate of the earth, for example, and then uh, the rotation rate can be expressed as 
this one and also the quaternion or uh, the quaternion is also important sometimes because when we want to calculate the Euler angle by using the rotation matrix, uh, sometimes it can form the uh, non-orthogonal matrix, which is difficult for us to calculate. So the quaternion will help to us to prevent the matrix becoming the non-orthogonal instead of Euler angles. So sometimes instead of Euler angles, the quaternions are often used to represent the rotations because they inherently avoid the gimbal lock to ensure the numerical stabilities. So to uh, sometimes when 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 you calculate it with the Euler angle and you have the orthogonal uh, the non-orthogonal matrix and you cannot calculate that anymore because all the values will return, for example, zero. So it will be difficult to calculate. But but when you're we're using quaternions, the we can divide a value more uh, representable. Can we say like that? So for example, uh, at last we have the example here. Uh, so for example, let's assume the ship's orientations with respect to the navigation frame. So we know that this is the navigation frame as the initial positions, and we have the body frame. And then, so it goes, so for example, at the first initial position, the, the ships is referenced to the navigation frame, and then it slightly rotated, for example. And then we'll be having the roll value, pitch value, and the yaw value. And assuming that we have the factor in the body frame as a one zero zero here, and the transformations, we're applying the transformations functions formula from the body frame to the navigation frame, and then how the rotation matrix should look like. So we have this, the constructions of the uh, other angles, with the respect of the direction cosine matrix. And then we just put all of the values into this together. Then we'll be having the matrix of the uh, rotations between the body and navigation frame after we're calculating all the cosine and sinus value above. And then later on, we put this rotation rate into the matrix of uh, rotation matrix to the matrix of one zero zero, we'll be having uh, the uh, estimated positions of where our vehicle or our body frame currently is with respect to the uh, navigation frame here with the X, Y, and Z values. All right, if you have any questions or anything, please address us in the class. Uh, or you can also send me an email or you can also send the chat in the Teams or in the Moodles and I'll see you in the next lectures. Bye-bye.